Hello and welcome back to the Anatomy of a Rifle series. This episode is going to be pretty short and sweet compared to the rest because we have actually already covered some of the components that are responsible for magnifying the image. The objective lens and the erector system. So I do recommend that you check those out before we jump into this one. As we all know, a rifle scope's primary purpose is to magnify an image. It's the main reason that rifle scopes were invented in the first place, and if you don't need to magnify an image, you're probably better off with iron sights or reflex sight. When you look at a scene through a rifle scope, the light is gathered by the objective lens and focused onto the front focal plane before traveling through various lenses inside the erector system and then through an eyepiece into your eye. But which lenses are actually responsible for magnifying an image? Well, I think the best way to answer this question is to compare two rifle scopes in the same family with the same erector systems. A 4 to 16 by 44 helix and a 6 to 24 by 50 helix. Both of these have a four times erector system, which means that the base magnification is multiplied by four times when the zoom cells move in and out. This is why these models can be priced so similarly. They both share very much the same components aside from the objective. The main difference, as I mentioned, is the base magnification. The 4 to 16 has a four times base magnification and the 6 to 24 has a six times base magnification and this has to do with the objective. As an image is magnified, the image becomes darker to your eye and this is why higher magnification rifle scopes tend to need larger objective diameters. Rifle scopes with a higher base magnification also tend to require more physical movement of the turrets for a given angular adjustment downrange. This means that scopes with lower base magnifications may also have far more elevation travel for a given tube diameter. So if I bring another rifle scope into the equation here, a 2 to 16 by 50 Helix HDLR, this has the same max magnification as the 4 to 16 Helix, but it achieves this with an 8 times erector system and a 2 times base magnification. That is why the 2 to 16 Helix HDLR is capable of achieving more elevation travel than the 4 to 16 Helix. It's quite interesting, isn't it? As for how the zoom ring actually works, when you turn the zoom ring, it engages the outer sleeve of the erector tube, which in turn shifts a group of two lens doublets forwards and backwards inside the erector tube. Zoom is a really useful thing to have, but remember when it comes to optics, you often have to lose one thing in order to gain something else. You may have to sacrifice on image quality, image brightness, size, weight, elevation and windage adjustment range, and price, as systems with more zoom generally require more expensive lenses and more advanced optical engineering to achieve acceptable performance. You may not need as much zoom as you think you do, and sometimes smaller is better. In the final video of this series, we're going to bring this into land with discussion about the very last component, the eyepiece. Hope to see you there. 